You know, when I first saw this article you sent over from the Economic Times mm. um, about HMPV in China, well, it really kind of caught my eye. It feels like we're getting some serious like 2020 vibes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we're here to break it all down. It makes sense that people are a little on edge, I think. When you see headlines, you know, throwing around terms like crisis and COVID like scare, it's bound to raise some eyebrows. For sure. For sure. Okay, so let's just dive right in. The article is highlighting this surge in cases of something called HMPV, overflowing hospitals concerned experts. So first things first, what exactly is this HMPV? So HMPV stands for a human metapneumovirus, and it's a respiratory virus. It was discovered back in 2001. I always think it's funny that that's the same year that Wikipedia launched, if that helps you place it in time at all. And interestingly enough, it actually belongs to the same family as RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, which a lot of you might be familiar with, especially if you have kids. Okay, so it's not a brand new virus. Yeah. But it's yeah. definitely making headlines right now. Mm -hmm. What's going on in China specifically? Well, the situation is complex. You see these news reports, social media painting this picture of overwhelmed hospitals in China, but there hasn't been any official emergency declaration, not from the Chinese authorities or the World Health Organization. It's a lot of chatter, but no official alarm bells just yet. But if it's not a new virus, why is it causing so much concern right now? Well, the scale of this outbreak, it seems to be pretty significant. Yeah. And to make things even more complicated, reports are suggesting that HMPV isn't the only virus that's going around in China right now. They're seeing a mix of respiratory illnesses spreading all at the same time, including things like influenza A, mycoplasma pneumonia, and even good old COVID-19 is still in the mix. Hold on. Mycoplasma pneumonia. That's not one we hear every day. What is that exactly? That's a good question. So mycoplasma pneumonia is a type of bacteria that causes something that's often called walking pneumonia. It's usually a milder form of pneumonia than the kind that's caused by other bacteria or viruses. Okay, so you've got this mix of viruses and bacteria all circulating at the same time. Sounds like a recipe for a rough cold and flu season. But back to HMPV. What are the symptoms and how do they compare to, say, COVID-19? Another great question. So both HMPV and COVID-19 are respiratory viruses, and they can cause pretty similar symptoms. With HMPV, you're typically looking at things like cough, runny nose, fever, sore throat. You know the usual suspects when it comes to colds and flus. So far, so familiar. Oh. But I'm guessing it doesn't always stay that mild. The article mentioned tripled cases in overflowing hospitals. Doesn't exactly scream common cold. You're right. In some cases, HMKV can actually lead to more serious respiratory problems like wheezing, shortness of breath, even bronchitis or pneumonia. And this is especially true for people who are in high risk groups like young children under five, adults over 65. And anyone with a weakened immune system or existing respiratory conditions. Okay, so if you fall into one of those categories, it's definitely something to watch out for. But how is this different from COVID-19? They both seem to cause these respiratory issues. And as we all know by now, they spread through those pesky droplets. Yeah, that's a key point. There are similarities for sure, but there's also some important distinctions. For one, HMPV tends to have a more predictable seasonal pattern. It mainly circulates during the winter and spring, unlike COVID-19, which can stick around all year round. So at least for now, HMPV isn't a year round threat. That's one less thing to worry about, right? Mm -hmm. But there was something in the article that I found really interesting, and it was the timing of this HMPV surge. Cases in some areas tripled after COVID restrictions eased. I'm curious about this spike after lockdowns ended. What factors could be at play here? Well, that's where this whole idea of immunity debt comes in. You see, our immune systems rely on different types of immunity to fight off these invaders. We have innate immunity, which is our first line of defense. And then we have adaptive immunity, which develops over time as we're exposed to various pathogens. Lockdowns and social distancing, while they were necessary to combat COVID-19, they might have unintentionally led to fewer exposures to those common viruses. So when those restrictions eased, Viruses like HMPV, they encountered a population that might be, on average, a little bit more susceptible. But couldn't this immunity debt also make us stronger in the long run, like our immune systems are going through a boot camp? That's an interesting point. It's certainly possible that repeated exposure to viruses can strengthen our immune response over time. But the key is to find that balance. Enough exposure to build immunity, but not so much that it overwhelms our systems especially for those who are more vulnerable. That's a discussion for another time, but something for all of you to think about. Okay, so this concept of immunity debt could be playing a role in this HMPV surge, but it's not necessarily a simple cause and effect. It's this complex interaction between the vir our immune systems and the changing environment around us. But this all begs the question, 
Are we looking at a potential pandemic? Is HMPV the new COVID-19? That is the million dollar question, and the answer is, as always with infectious diseases, it's complicated. HMPV has been circulating globally for over two decades. And while we've seen outbreaks before, it's never reached pandemic levels. So while the situation in China is definitely something to keep an eye on, it's not necessarily a sign of an impending global pandemic. But what about the potential for this to spread beyond China? What are the chances of similar surges happening in other parts of the world? Well, that's where things get really interesting. And that's what we'll be diving into in part two of this deep dive. We'll be looking at global trends, potential risk factors, and what experts are saying about the possibility of HMPV outbreaks beyond China. Sounds like a cliffhanger. Mm. We'll be right back with part two after a quick break. Right after the break. Welcome back. So as promised, we're going to pick up our deep dive into HMPV right where we left off, exploring the potential for this virus to spread beyond China. Yeah, you know, the article really focuses on China. But I'm sitting here thinking, what about the rest of us? Could we see similar surges in HMPV cases elsewhere? It's a valid concern, and it's something that experts are definitely watching closely. And while it's too early to say for sure, you know, if we'll see these widespread outbreaks like what's happening in China, there are a few factors that make it a possibility worth considering. All right, hit me with those factors. What should we be on the lookout for? Well, first remember that HMPV is a global traveler. It's been detected in pretty much every corner of the world. The Economic Times article even mentioned the study published in The Lancet that found that pretty much everyone has been infected with HMPV by the time they turn five. So chances are you've probably already encountered this virus at some point in your life. So it's not like this virus is suddenly appearing out of thin air. We've been sharing the planet with it for a while. But why the sudden concern now? Hmm. Well, that's where those factors we talked about earlier come back into play. You know, this whole idea of immunity debt and the potential for us to be more susceptible after periods of limited viral exposure. And combine that with the fact that HMPV often gets mistaken for just a common cold or the flu. And it's possible that we're not getting the full picture of how widespread it really is. Wait, so you're saying that HMPV could be spreading undetected just because it looks like these other common illnesses? That's a little unsettling. It's definitely a possibility. See, surveillance and testing for HMPV just aren't as common as they are for other respiratory viruses like COVID-19 or influenza. And since those symptoms can overlap so much, it's easy to see how HMPV might fly under the radar. Okay, so limited surveillance, tricky diagnosis. Are there any other factors that could be contributing to HMPV spreading beyond China? I'm picturing those little virus particles hopping on planes and traveling the world. Well, you're not far off. International travel patterns definitely play a role in how infectious diseases spread. As travel picks back up post-pandemic, it's easier for viruses to hitch a ride across borders, and that includes HMPV. The article even highlighted this, stating that the relaxation of international travel restrictions could facilitate the spread of HMPV to other regions. So all those holiday trips and family gatherings, not just spreading holiday cheer, but potentially spreading HMPV as well. It's definitely something to think about. But are experts actually worried about this? What are they saying about the global HMPV? outlook. Well, as you might expect, there's a range of opinions out there. Some experts are urging caution, and they're really pushing for increased surveillance to track the virus's movements. They argue that we need to be prepared for the possibility of these wider outbreaks, drawing parallels to how quickly COVID-19 spread across the globe. So a better safe than sorry approach. Not a bad idea considering what we've been through in recent years. Exactly. On the other hand, some experts are taking a more measured view. They point out that HMTC has been circulating for years without causing these major global disruptions. They believe that while we might see some localized outbreaks, it's unlikely to reach pandemic levels. Okay, so a mix of caution and cautious optimism. Sounds familiar. It's like the early days of COVID all over again, with experts trying to make sense of a rapidly evolving situation. But this all feels a bit theoretical. We've talked about potential risks. But what does this actually mean for me? What are the practical steps I can take to minimize my risk and stay ahead of this potential wave? That is a great question. And it leads us perfectly into part three of our deep dive, where we're gonna shift our focus to actionable steps. Things that you can take right now to protect yourself and those around you. We'll cover everything from basic hygiene tips to boosting your immune system and staying informed about the latest developments. It sounds like a plan. We'll be right back with part three. Welcome back, deep divers. So in part one, we talked about what HMPV is and that concerning situation that's unfolding in China. Then in part two, we looked at those global factors that could really influence the spread of HMPV. 
But now let's get down to the practical stuff. What can you actually DO to protect yourself and stay ahead of this potential wave? That's the question, isn't it? And the good news is a lot of the advice we're about to share, it's probably gonna sound pretty familiar. Think back to all those COVID era practices. You know, those things that became second nature to a lot of us. You mean like washing our hands like we're about to perform surgery? Yeah. And dodging coughs like they're tiny little missiles. Exactly, those basic hygiene habits. They're surprisingly effective against a whole bunch of respiratory viruses, including HMPV. All right, so let's break it down. What are the top tips that our listeners should be keeping in mind? Well, first and foremost, hand washing. I know it might sound simple, but it's a really powerful weapon against germs. Make sure you're washing your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you've been in public places using the restroom or before eating. Yeah, and if soap and water aren't readily available, hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol can be a good backup. I know I always have a little bottle stashed in my bag. Excellent. Now let's talk about those missile-like coughs and sneezes. Remember to cover your mouth and nose with a tissue, or if you don't have one, the crook of your elbow, whenever you cough or sneeze. And make sure you dispose of those used tissues properly. We don't want those germs making a comeback. It's all about containing those viral explosions. Yeah. Right? Speaking of containing things, let's not forget about all those sneaky surfaces that we're touching all the time. Oh, that's a good point. Think about doorknobs, light switches, phones, keyboards, all those high-touch surfaces can really harbor germs. Regularly cleaning and disinfecting them can go a long way in reducing the spread of viruses. It's amazing how many things we touch throughout the day without even realizing it. Now this next tip might sound like a broken record, but it's still so important. Staying home when you're sick. Absolutely, if you're feeling under the weather, especially with those respiratory symptoms, staying home is the best way to prevent spreading that virus to other people. Yeah, think of it as like a guilt-free opportunity to binge watch your favorite shows, catch up on some reading, or just take some well-deserved rest. And speaking of things that might feel familiar, remember those trusty face masks? Yes. While masks may not be mandatory everywhere anymore, they're still a very valuable tool, especially in crowded indoor settings. If you're in a high-risk group, or if HMPV activity is high in your area. It's like having an extra layer of protection. Okay, so we've covered hygiene, cough, etiquette, surface cleaning, staying home when sick, and masks. Anything else we can do to boost our defenses against HMPV? Well, there's no magic bullet. But maintaining a healthy lifestyle can definitely make a difference. Think of it as building a strong foundation for your immune system. Get enough sleep, eat a balanced diet exercise regularly, and find healthy ways to manage stress. So all of those things our parents have been telling us for years, turns out they were on to something. Exactly. And finally, and this is really important, stay informed. Keep an eye on those reliable sources of information like the CDC, the WHO. They'll provide updates on HMPV activity in your area. Knowing what's circulating can help you make those informed decisions about your health. So it's all about being proactive and taking those everyday preventative measures seriously. But what if, Despite our best efforts, we do start feeling those telltale HMPV symptoms. What should we do then? Well, if your symptoms are mild, you can focus on rest, hydration, and over-the-counter medications to manage any discomfort. But if your symptoms start to get worse or if you have any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to your healthcare provider. Especially if you're in one of those high-risk groups we talked about earlier, right? Absolutely. Early intervention can make a really big difference in preventing complications. With Deep Divers, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive into HMPV. We started by unpacking what this virus is and exploring that concerning situation that's unfolding in China. Then we looked at those factors that could potentially influence the global spread of HMPV. And finally, we armed you with some practical tips to protect yourself and stay healthy. Any final words of wisdom before we wrap up? I think the key takeaway here is that knowledge is power. By understanding HMPV, we can make more informed choices to protect ourselves and our communities. Stay curious, stay vigilant, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Beautifully said. Deep Divers, we hope you found this deep dive informative and empowering. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. We're all navigating this ever-changing world of infectious diseases together. Stay healthy, stay curious, and until next time, happy diving.